Next, Elaine Settergren is a reference librarian at the Minnesota Legislative Reference Library. Her role as a nonpartisan staff member includes participation as an accessibility coordinator to advise and inform colleagues within the Legislative Coordinating Commission as well as the House and Senate. Elaine is going to cover good practices for accessibility when covering complex content. Elaine. Thank you very much, Rosie. Hello, this is Elaine speaking. Today I'm going to talk about presentation slides. Um, go to the next slide, please. My first tip is for you to present as if everyone is on the phone. You'll want to describe what's on the slide, and on this slide here we have some old fashioned uh, phone receivers, and you'll notice that throughout the presentation today we've had folks describing what's on the slides, and that's very helpful. It's helpful for a lot of different people, people with um, participants with low or no vision, which does include people who are calling in and only have access to the audio, and it just adds a lot of clarity and context um, to the images and graphs that you've chosen for your presentations. Next slide, please. The image here is of a spaghetti junction. It's a lot of complicated transitions on a highway, and um, the tip that goes along with this is to reduce complexity in your slide transitions. So Microsoft Office gives us a lot of options to transition from slide to slide, but the best rule of thumb is to keep it simple. There's um, certain um, in digital environments, there's certain motions or movements or animations that can cause um, nausea in certain folks, especially people with an inner ear issue. And um, not to get too nerdy here, but if you're looking into the criteria, it is 2.3.3 um, um, of the WCAG 2.1 accessibility standards. My next slide is also about reducing complexity. And this is complexity of your content. And this is something that Jenny DeLisi touched on a little bit earlier today, um, which is um, keeping your content simple by providing details in advance and focusing on just those core concepts in your slide. The image here is of a woman holding a tablet and on the tablet is displayed one simple graph, a bar graph, um, that's very large and clear to read. Um, it's just the one core concept that she wants to deliver. It doesn't have a lot of details and it has good color contrast, um, which are some of the, the ways that you can reduce complexity in your content. Um, basically, you just want to keep it short and sweet. You don't want to um, put a lot of words on, no full sentences. You don't want to be reading your slides. Um, one other thing that I saw related to this is if you are going to have captions along the bottom of your slides, you'll want to remember that, uh, that that's going to be an issue and make sure that you don't have overlapping content. Uh, next slide, please. When it comes to sharing the content that you've created, um, first of all, you'll want to make sure that your PowerPoint is accessible and you can do that by going to the review tab in Microsoft Office uh, PowerPoint and then running the accessibility checker. And so that's the first thing you'll do once you're satisfied with the accessibility of the main content, then you can convert it to PDF and that's the best way to share. It's the most universal format. Uh, what I didn't touch on today are some um, more specific detailed tips for um, making the content um, uh, or sorry for making the um, the slides more accessible, but that's all available on the Office of Accessibility website in their accessible PowerPoint presentations. I'll just give you verbally a few examples of those things like um, making unique titles, um, slide titles for each slide, um, using content placeholders rather than text boxes, um, putting alt text on all of your images and your objects. So if you make smart art or anything like that, that graph that we saw a picture of earlier would have alt text. Um, and make sure that you consider your links carefully. Um, you know, it kind of varies from presentation to presentation if you want to put the whole link on there or if you want to just link some words. 
uh, and then also, of course, that um, the notes may not be accessible to certain assistive technologies. So those are all things that are examples of things that you'll find on the accessible PowerPoint presentations page from the Office of Accessibility. And that is all I have today, and I'll send it back to Rosie to introduce the next speaker. Thank you.